I love horror games, and every time I find a new one, I just snap it up blindly. Obviously, I'm still chasing the dragon of Fatal Frame 2 and Silent Hill 2, but I still can't help myself. It's not always about gore or jump scares, but more about the creeping dread and an atmospheric location. Of course, if it's atmosphere you want, the park will have you covered. Filled with Lovecraftian undertones, we follow a distraught and emotionally unsound young mother as she searches an after-hours amusement park for her missing son. Really, the park takes more cues from its amusement park location than just the rides. The game itself plays out much like a trip through a whorehouse, devoid of any real danger, but filled with a one-way trip through a series of disturbing and psychological horror-filled situations as the protagonist's grasp on reality starts to unravel. The gameplay is simple. Explore the park, find notes, listen to insane ramblings, and try and unravel the truth behind what is going on. While the visuals are good, but not great, the real star of the show is the excellent sound design which everyone knows is a must for any great horror game. Sadly, the park falls far from the great category, with its biggest detriment being its incredibly short hour and a half runtime and the lack of any compelling reason to return to the game once finished. I can't help but wonder if they should have just released it as a virtual reality demo, where the short game length would have been less of an issue. That said, even with its short runtime, I did enjoy the experience. It was priced at the cost of seeing a movie, and between its runtime and how it's played, I can't think of any better example for what to measure the game's cost against. In short, if you're desperate for some horror and have the cash, the park offers a decent, a little bit pricey, ride.